My name is Dmitry Babichev, and today I'm going to present a joint work with my supervisor, Francis Bach. It is called Constant Step Size SGD for Probabilistic Model. Uh, this talk is supposed to be on optimization se uh, section, but due to uh, visa issues, uh, organizers and sp uh, speakers from previous section uh, agreed to change places. Thank you. Okay, I'll start with... Uh, I'll start with small SGD recap. So stochastic gradient descent is used to optimize convex function F capital, which represent uh, usually log likelihoods, and which is expectation over functions Fn, which represent uh, single observation likelihoods. And the goal of this problem is to optimize this convex function F capital. We choose uh, Constant subsize SGD because firstly it is cheap and uh, hence it is suitable for big data sets. And secondly, it is easy to tune only one parameter, step size, instead of tuning two parameters, step size and decay and power. But still, the main disadvantage of constant step size SGD is that it converges only to some neighborhood of solution. And in this talk, I'm going to introduce different kind of averaging to converge to the optimal solution. As we consider constant size SGD, we can represent it as a homogeneous Markov chain. It means that under some regularity assumptions, it converts to stationary distribution, which we called pi gamma. And it means that it starts to oscillate around some point point uh, theta bar gamma. And what people usually do, they use averaging in uh, red. And after this averaging, we start to converge to this point. But still, there is gap between this expectation and optimal value of parameter of the theta star. And it, this gap is of order of step size. Now let's look at uh, a step size uh, uh, a gradient step equation on the above and take expectation both over parameter theta and over data x. So if you took expectation over parameter theta, and two terms, first two terms are cancel out because they converge to stationary distribution. And by definition, expectation of Fn is F capital. So we get so-called stationary equation. And from this equation, we can see, for example, that if function is quadratic, that gap is zero. So this in a case when gap is not of gamma. If function is not quadratic, there is still some information in this equation we want to exploit. Uh, on this slide, I show that different kind of averaging instead of plane averaging can help to converge to optimal value of parameter. Let's look again at stationary equation and consider a simple Bernoulli model. And note that if we renderize it, it happens to be logistic regression problem. Now the goal is to find theta star for logistic regression problem. And uh, let's write down negative log likelihood and solve equation f prime is equal to zero. And we can see that sigmoid of optimal value of parameter is expectation of x. From the other hand, if we look at stationary equation, we can see that expectation or stationary distribution of sigmoid of parameter is again expectation of x. So it means that expectation over stationary distribution of sigmoid of parameter is equal to sigmoid of optimal parameter. So averaging over sigmoid of parameter instead of averaging over parameter helps us to converge to optimal value. Actually, we can do this trick for a wider class of distribution distributions, which I'm going to show on the next slide. The general model we consider is conditional expectational family in its classical form. 
So the x is data, theta is parameters, y is responses, and also we consider a linear model where phi of x is some fixed fixed set of functions. It represents features of our data. Classical examples, as I already mentioned, logistic regression and also Poisson regression. Writing down the expected negative log likelihood, the goal is to find parameter theta, which are best, which is best suit data and responses. The usual way to do it, for example, to use stochastic gradient descent with decaying step size or with constant step size at averaging. But what we are looking for to some function mu to average over. So we're looking for some function mu, such that expectation or stationary distribution of this function is this function of optimal value of parameter. And this lead me to the main idea, which is called averaging prediction trick. So let's look again at our negative log likelihood and at stationary equation. Now what we want to do to combine them and substitute first equation to the second one. Then we want to use the law of total expectation and rearrange expectation over data and expectation over parameter. And we get equation number two. Now introduce notations. Uh, we denote mu star star conditional expectation of y. And in few min few minutes, you'll see that it is a very good uh, function, actually. It is global minimizer in a wider class of functions. And we introduce notation of prediction functions, mu of x. And now our equation can be rewritten in the form of equation number three. It's here is this equation again. And we want to show that function b of x is close to zero. Why we want to show it? Because if it is the case, then expectation or stationary distribution of prediction function mu of x is close to mu star star and hence it is a good estimator of it. To prove it, we need two assumptions. First one is orthonormality of set of functions and also that every function, every smooth function, should be represented close enough in this set of functions. So b of x is linear combination of functions plus some small epsilon of x. Let's substitute it to boxed equation. Then use orthogonality and smallness of function epsilon of x. And we can see that each coefficient s is close to zero and hence function b also close to zero. So once again, the message is that expectation over station distribution of prediction function is close to function mu star star. And the effect is stronger the bigger basis phi of x is. Now it is picked to illustrate what we did, to help you to understand in more details. So we start with space of parameter theta, and now we are in parametric set. And for each parameter theta, we construct prediction functions mu, using the formula above the arrow. But actually, we want to generalize, generalize it, our model and consider not only linear functions, but wider class of functions, for example, all smooth functions. So now we are working in a class of in functional space and not parameter, parameter setup anymore. We already know that uh, averaging over parameter convert to some point which is at some distance of optimal point theta star on the left in, in the red line. Now if we apply prediction function to each parameter we get a situation on the right again red line it converts to some mu bar which is close in some distance on mu star. What we propose to do is average our predictions. It is in green line. So instead of applying function mu first, we instead of averaging over thetas and then applying function mu, 
we average our functions, our prediction functions. And we are going to convert to mu star star. And mu star star actually a global minimizer in, in new class of functions. So mu star is the best linear estimator and mu star star is the best error estimator in this set of function. So potentially our approach can recover models that are not, not, not linear anymore. We call model well specified is mu star is equal to mu star star and mi specified if it is not a case. Okay, to what we did in previous slide, once again, there are two approaches. First one is simple, it's called averaging parameters, where we first average over parameter theta, and then we apply prediction function. And second one is what we propose, we change these two things and uh, we average our, func our prediction functions. Also, we have asymptotical analysis for our estimators. I recall that uh, functions we was going to optimize of theta is F capital. And uh, we need to introduce some type of, uh, some kind of function for predictions. We call it geomu. And uh, for a matter of completeness, I provide you with uh, estimators without averaging. So without averaging, the rate is linear. Uh, averaging para for averaging parameters, the rate is quadratic. And the last two cases are mine. So for well-specified case, error again quadratic. Sometimes it can be worse, sometimes it can be better. And the last one is for me-specified case. And you can see that rate is only linear and you can ask it is worse than quadratic. Yes, sometimes yes, but constant can be negative. And if constant is negative, it means that we obtain estimator better than ever linear estimator can ever achieve. And usually it is the case in experiments. The bigger basis fees, the better our estimator. If you want to take infinite number of functions, we need to switch to kernel setup and uh, work in Hilbert space. As we cannot keep infinite number of uh, parameters, we use so-called kernel trick to, re to represent parameter as linear combination of, of basis function. Then we do recursion, and finally we get our estimator mu bar bar. Note that if our kernel is universal, it means that every function, it spans entire space of functions, that this estimator recover mu star star without a gap at all. Also because uh, <coughs> complexity, computational complexity of kernel approach is bigger than usual approach, we use some technique to reduce this complexity. And this is again visualization but now for kernel approach. In kernel approach, all models are well specified. So mu star is equal to mu star star. And on the right, red approach is, uh, red line is averaging parameter approach at encouraged to some distance of optimal solution. And in green, it is averaging predictions. And it potentially converge to global optimizer without a gap at all. And now to experiments. <coughs> uh, first one is simple synthetic data. So we consider two-dimensional X and uh, logistic regression response. The model is uh, no, the model is misspecified because it is sum of sinuses and basis phi of X is just X. And we can see in red line, it is approach without averaging. It converts pretty bad. 
in green line it is averaging parameters and in black line it is averaging predictions and it better than usual averaging for matter of completeness i also present uh, averaging parameters with decaying step size in blue this case is to show that my approach sometimes can be worse than previous one uh, actually it was very difficult to find this example because usually the case is like in previous slide but here you can see that averaging prediction is in black is worse than averaging parameters in green now to the kernel, kernel case as i mentioned in kernel case our approach is always better than averaging parameters again in red it is without averaging and in black our approach outperform outperforms <coughs> averaging parameters in green for kernel we also need to use some regularization because it's not going to convert without it and finally to real data set again we use logistic regression it is 50 dimension data set and 100,000 po data points and again averaging prediction in uh, black outperform averaging parameters and now to the conclusion so what we did in this work we firstly we showed that we introduced different type of averaging to converge not to suboptimal solution but converge to optimal solution <coughs> secondly we derive asymptotical analysis for our estimator and showed that in kernel approach uh, this averaging potentially recovers the best solution future direction is to get more explicit convergence rates thank you for your attention your question is, questions are welcome.